Hi guys, welcome to another video. It feels like I'm in a period in my life where everything is sort of going my way. I feel really happy. I haven't sold the house yet. I have another showing on the December 27th. But now I've, you know, all those things that I rented uh, from these stylists that helped me decorate the house. Uh, I've actually, they've come and pick up their stuff. I'm taking a break. I won't try and sell the house again until the spring, unless any of the families that have already seen it, you know, change their mind and place a bid. But the, I really love just living in my house with my own stuff, having also decluttered the whole house, which I think is the big thing, making it look nice. So what I've done is I've kind of tried to copy what the stylist did, like the rugs they used, the colors they used, and also like, you know, lights. Um, I went out and bought some vases. I got them secondhand, got a great price. So I, I think I can do a lot with, with very little um, that will make it maybe not as, as nice as they did it, but nice enough, you know. I don't think that the house, it's not all about the deck. As long as I don't have a bunch of stuff everywhere, I think I'll do okay. Um, but now I think my economical situation will change a little bit since I have a job um, starting January 17th. So it, now I'm maybe not quite as desperate to move as I was. And then when summer comes, my daughter will come home uh, and probably stay because she's in this, a special program that's only one year. So she'll come home again. Then there'll be three of us at least in the house and not only two. So I don't know. You know, it's just I can't. I'm sort of a powerless over what happens. I'm not willing to sell at a really cheap price because I'm not desperate. That's just so I, I can make a lot of money just sitting here for another year if I can do it. Oh, I'm looking at a deer out on the porch. <laughs> we have all this wildlife around. Um, yeah, I should probably show it to you. <laughs> They're so cute when they come up on the patio. They're just really, really unafraid. Anyway, I wanted to today come online and just share uh, the joy that I'm feeling um, about this incredible gift that somebody sent me. Someone that follows this channel, someone who follows me on in my local nerdy perfume group on Facebook, where I also regularly post videos about, you know, just what I'm wearing, what I bought, what I what I don't like, what I don't think is worth the money, etc. You know, kind of the stuff I do here. And she just want, needed to declutter. She didn't feel like, you know, selling everything separate. So she just wanted to like, I think she just wanted to, to do something really nice for someone. So she sent me this incredible package of stuff a big box. I've kind of categorized things a little bit. That that, that bowl was not in there. Uh, and she, she also included a little note to say how much she appreciated my videos. Um, it's just a Swedish woman that I've never met though. I don't even know what she looks like because her profile picture is not, I think, of her. It's more like a, you know, like a painted picture. But I just thought I would tell you what's in here because it'll give you an idea about things that will be showing up on this video coming up. So I'll start with I've kind of grouped them a little bit. First, I have minis, a number of minis. They came with the packaging and everything in these little, little, uh, little boxes, and they're quite full. All of these. Um, there's, there's a little bottle of. This will be my first acquaintance with Alien, Alien Essence Absolute. I think is the flanker of this one, um, and I've never really. I've tried Alien, but I've never really had a sample and tried it properly. So I couldn't tell you like the difference, but this is pretty sweet. But I'm gonna be, I'm really excited about giving this a chance. Then there's an older bottle of Fendi. Uh, I just just kind of tried that a little bit, and that's kind of a very typical for like the '90s era, is at least my opinion so far. I've just kind of like you know taken a little tiny drop. And then there's a um, a bottle of Je Ose. Uh, which I don't, I should have found out what it means, but it's from Guy La Roche, and it's a really, really pretty, uh, sh I think it's cheaper style, floral, also from like the 90s, I would guess. I think this one came out earlier, but um, I'm sure it was around until, I'm not sure when it was, it 1978? I looked it up the other day, but I can't remember. I haven't tried it properly. And then there's something from Yves, uh, Yves Rocher, yeah, Moment de Bonheur, very cute little bottle. It's kind of that's kind of a cheaper brand, Yves Rocher. I, I don't haven't tried a whole lot from them. And then there's a Nina Risi, which I have no experience with at all. Is the ED, the EDT, and I think it's just called Nina. This one. So those were the minis, and then there were about ten, eight, ten so-called sniffs. If you're in Sweden or if you're in the UK, you can buy from them. They have they sell like subscription 
uh, service perfumes where you get one of these every month. It's eight milliliter and the name is on, they have a really, really small lettering. So what this person has done is put, put the name on another label so it's easier to read, which I really, really appreciate. And I'll just tell you quickly what I, what's in here, or especially the ones that I'm excited about. Uh, from Healy Parfums, Cardinal which is a, an incense perfume that I've really been thinking about. Actually, I'm just gonna spray it on right this second um, on my hand where I don't have anything. Because it's, it's an incense perfume, not too heavy. I've been thinking about, you know, get, get, trying to get a sample of it because I'm kind of like, usually incense dominant fragrances don't interest me that much, but if they're not too heavy, they can really work. So that's Healy. Um, Cardinal, it's called, that one. And then I've got um, a white floral perfume. And I think white florals work really well in the winter. Someone someone in my group just kind of made me realize. She says that uh, white florals really work in, when it's cold and that they are extra beautiful in the cold. I'd never thought of it that way, but maybe there's a, she has a point because sometimes in the summer it can be can be a little bit too cloying, can be kind of sweet, you know, white perfumes. And this is Bouquet Encore from L'Orchestra Parfum. Uh, I have actually worn that a little bit. Um, I've just, I mean, I basically just tried it. So I'll have to get back to you about, you know, how it relates to other white florals that I have. And then there is uh, Tobacco Volute from L'Atelier Parfum, which is an interesting fragrance. I've tried that just a speck. Most of these I haven't tried at all. Uh, and then there's one called Writer from Genium. I've never even heard of this. Um, what else have I got here? Melancholia from Liquid Imaginaire. Oh, yeah, oh yes, speaking of Liquid Imaginaire, I'm now waiting for my decant of Blanche Bette to come in the mail, a uh, five milliliter, but this is another fragrance in that, in that, from that house, Melancholia. Um, I did try that the other day, what was it like? God, I can't remember it now. I have to get back to you on these. There, there was so much at the same time. There's from Elisir Extra Noir. That house I like. I, oh, well, I, I like two two fragrances from there, Desired and Poudre Desir. Those two are almost safe blind buys. They're so darn good. Then there's uh, Cherry Blossom from Floris. I have tried this a little bit. It's a little bit kind of like what you would expect. Not super interest, interesting, but very nice and fresh. Kind of a little bit shampooish. Um, and then there's, this is from a Swedish influencer. I don't think you'll know this one. It's called X by this influencer called Margot. Um, or Perfume G, it says. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I won't spend any time on that one. And then there's one called Role Play from this brand called Molo. This is not on Fragrantica. This is a Swedish entrepreneur that has made, is now kind of trying to make his own niche house. I've been a little anti um, his name is M Martin Lawrenson. That's why Emma Low. It's like his initials, the first two letters in each of his names. But I actually, this role play, I think is quite interesting. This is the one, the only one that I've kind of liked or wanted to wear again so far. Um, I wore it yesterday. It's kind of a vanillic, um, it reminded me like a little bit of frustration from Etat Libre de Range that I really have been enjoying lately. If you haven't caught my video, Most Worn Perfumes, um, it's among, it's on that list. I have like most worn since September. Uh, it's definitely among those. I wore it yesterday, as a matter of fact. And then I have nothing but sea, what does it say? Nothing but sea and sky in Nuit Nomad. I haven't given that a, a proper wearing yet. And there's tea tonic from Miller Harris. I do like actually tea fragrances more and more. Um, there also in here is Neroli Ut Renoir. I just kind of ran out of my sample that I had of it. And this sample is like, I love these Guerlain samples. I don't know like where to get a hold of them if they just used to have them. Now they're just into the regular, but look how big that is. It's, that's a beautiful, uh, it's probably three. Let's see how much, how much are these? They're 3.8. Now that is a generous sample. This is a beautiful, fresh Neroli fragrance with some bitterness from tea. Um, I, I won't be buying a full bottle, but I appreciate it for what it is. I'm not like really the Neroli type of person, but it was interesting. I tried, um, when I was in store the other day, trying different fragrances. It's kind of my, my favorite niche perfumery in Stockholm. Uh, the guy who owns the shop kind of showed me how, how um, this, this fragrance enhancer from DS and Durga called Leather Eyes 
really, really works with neroli. And it created kind of like a, like a dirty soap kind of feeling. It was really interesting, that combination. Um, it was, he, he took the neroli from Matière Première, I think. It's called neroli, can't remember the name of it, but it's kind of a good basic neroli. And then added the leather eyes on top. I, I really like that combination. So maybe I'll like try to, I have actually layered this. I was gonna, I remember I was gonna go out dancing. I got in the car and I felt like I was coming off too, too bitter too like fresh and bitter it wasn't like it wasn't the, the effect I wanted I wanted so I just sprayed some some I think I, I happened to have a few decants in the car and I, I sprayed on some messy sexy just rolled out of bed from a lab on fire and that was a great combination so maybe it is good for layering I, I don't think I'll be able to go through all of these because there's so much but all these are decants full or half full some have very little in them there was another one of cardinal actually there's a few milliliters of Musk Ravageur, which is one of my favorite fragrances. And it pro would probably be on my most worn anytime because I, I wear that like that's so easy to grab. Here's one that I've never seen before and I've already tried. It's called Oud Superfluid. It's a really nice, basic, I don't know what's exactly in here. Maybe some saffron. It's a kind of a band-aid-y kind of oud. I really, really like it. I really like it. It's a good basic first in, first encounter with oud. If you're like getting into oud um, and you don't want something barnyardy, uh, this doesn't have any of that skankiness. It's just really beautiful oud. Super fluid. I really like that. And the brand is called Le Zo Primordial. Le Zo Primordial. I, I've never heard of that brand before. So great fun. Oh, and what she also sent, this was I was extra happy about, is Cuir de Lancôme. It's a discontinued, long discontinued, leather fragrance that was marketed towards women. Super beautiful. Uh, I have it in a previous video a long time ago because I got to borrow, I got to borrow um, a bunch of leather fragrances from a perfume friend that kind of owns a lot of interesting perfume. He has a bottle of this. Uh, so I have worn it before, so I'll be very, very happy to use that. And then there's another floor, it's called 1976. There's Olong Infini from Atelier Cologne. There's Iris Drague that I used to have a bottle of, but I ended up not wearing it so much, I gave it to someone. But now it's gonna be, I'm, I'm really happy to like be able to revisit this. Um, and there's a Jo Malone fragrance that I don't think I've heard of. It's called Dark Amber Ginger Lily. It's so much fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's one called Marshmallow from M-O-R or more. I, I don't know this brand at all. I think they make skin care. So what I, I have, there's Musk Therapy from Inicio. It was like super, super hyped here in Sweden. I don't know if it's hyped all over or just here, but I've actually never, I've only tried it in store a few times. I've never given it like a proper wearing. Um, and then there's 100 Silent Ways, just a little tiny drop. And... Speaking of 100 Silent Ways, there's a bunch of decants there, like maybe 15. Um, she also sent me the whole Discovery set. The only one that's not in here was Ani X, the X collection from Nishane. And I'm not sure if these are all of them, but I think that they're all of them. Uh, they're not all the Nishanes, but all the ones that they made uh, X versions of. So I think that these are, I don't think they're necessarily stronger. I think they're different because they're already X strays. Uh, and I've tried Ani X actually in um, in store uh, th that was included, but it was empty. Um, so there's Hachivat, Hundred Silent Ways, Fan Your Flames, and Wulong Cha. Those four now I have of the X versions, so I will review them to you one of these days. Then I also got a bunch of like carded samples. I just put them in here just to. I don't know. It just, there's really no... I just organized them this way because I had to put them in my closet somehow. Um, okay, my, my ambition with these are to not just leave them in a pile. I want to try them, review them, um, pass them for, you know, pass them on to other people. I'll probably make little goodie bags for, for friends, you know, when I go somewhere or send them to somebody else that wants to try them. I mean, they're not going to be... I'm not going to let them collect dust uh, in in my closet because I don't believe in that. So one that I was extra happy about was Oud from Maison Francis Kirkjohn. 
I'm too cheap to buy myself a bottle because I never, I ever, hardly ever wear it. I mostly stand and sniff it at night because I love, love, love the smell. This is also a Band-Aid -y oud. I know this Band-Aid thing sounds really strange, but when, when you say the word Band-Aid and then you put your nose on it, you can kind of, you can kind of get what I mean, but it still smells fantastic. It's really strange. Uh, there's Jazz Club from Maison Margiela Replica. And then there's a bunch of the citrus fragrances from MFK as well. The, um, Uni Aqua Universalis Forte, a Celestia, Aqua Celestia Forte. And then I don't know if these are the same, but there's a small collection of Aqua Collect. I think there are like three fragrances in there. And then I've got Levan, this I've tried already, Levancio from Penhaligon, sorry about that. Um, Penhaligon's Levancium, which is a really nice Middle Eastern style, um, kind of amberish, smoky, really, really beautiful fragrance. I think there might, it might have some oud as well. I can't remember exactly what was in here. Um, very, very pretty, I love that. Yeah, it has oud, vanilla, amber, and a floral heart, and head notes of saffron and Davana. Really, really good. Um, I, I need to try, I had it like on one arm and I had something else on the other. Oh yeah, what I had on the other arm I didn't like so much. So I'm going to tell you about that one. That one has actually been, I'm not going to go back to it after this. It's Antigua from Phaedon. And Phaedon is kind of like a new acquaintance from, for me. I mean, I've heard of it. I just haven't tried things from there. Um, okay, so, oh, this is a fragrance that I really also wanted to go back to. I love this. Uh, Secrets to Paradise, Paradis Rouge from Jules et Mad. And I like this house. I just haven't had any bottles from there. It's quite pricey. But this fragrance, it's kind of, the, the juice is red. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that, but it reminds me a little bit of Love Don't Be Shy, but it's more wearable if I remember correctly. So very happy about that. And then from Simone Andrioli, which I only have only have one acquaintance of, and I think it's called the, the Rose of Dangerous Flamenco. Um, which is a really nice kind of oud bouquet, similar to oud bouquet fragrance. This one's called Don't Ask Me Permission. It very, it's called, it's an oud EDP intense. Simon Andrioli, looking forward to that. There's some Inicio's side effect I haven't tried for ages. There were two of those. Um, and uh, Addictive Vibration, which I have tried before. Uh, I think I finished that, my decant, but I didn't get a bottle. But it's like a beautiful, fruity candyish fragrance yet quite elegant pretty sweet that yeah that was that addictive vibration comes in a black bottle i guess um and then there's terra alba from mask milano i've never tried that i have two that i have not tried from olfactive studio flashback and flashback in new york i've tried still life in rio and still life those i've tried um i've tried actually a bunch bunch from that brand and then there are these that come with a little card. I don't even know. This one's called Tian D. It will be very exciting to, to research that. Citrus Batikanga, which I think is Maison Crivelli by a master perfumer that I can't remember the name, but um, I think that's a really good fragrance, something I wanted to try. And then I have Perfume Empire, Trois Fleurs, uh, never tried. I haven't tried much from them. This one I actually did try yesterday. Uh, this is a Swedish brand called SG79 Stockholm, or S-T-H-L-M, which is short for Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, this is number three, and it's, I think I, oh, I finished this. Um, number three EDP. This is a really fresh green apple, and what else is in here? Something really fresh. Oh, ginger lemon orange blossom fragrance. It was really, really fresh. It was like spring in a bottle. Not Nothing I would buy, but, but it's because it's not, it's good, but it just wasn't, it's not my category of fragrance. I probably would not spend more time, you know, I didn't really, I put it on in the morning and then when I had my shower around 10, it was Sunday yesterday, I, I washed it off and then I started over something else. So I, I can't really say anything about the longevity, um, but it, it was, it was a nice fragrance. Same thing with uh, you or someone like you, which also was included like a little sample from Eldo. In the dry down, these two, the number three from the Swedish brand there, and you, you or someone like you were quite similar. But this one opens up more. This is more minty. This has mint, grapefruit, 
Yeah, I don't like, I don't love grapefruit in fragrance, but it, that kind of, that bitterness from the grapefruit kind of disappears in the dry down, and it's just like a really nice, this, they both have green notes, so they're kind of like green and fresh, and they have citruses in the top. This has a little anise too, but it, it, the mint is very prominent in you or someone like you, so I recommend it if you're looking for a mint fragrance to check it out. Not a safe blind buy, however. Uh, okay, so those were some of the cards. I'm not done yet. And then I also got so many samples like that didn't come in a box or with a card that there are um, there's so much to go through here. Most of it's niche. Oh, there, there's a Naomi Goodzier called Curie de Velour that I've never tried. I've never tried anything from, from that house, actually. There's three Amouage samples, Ciel, Gold, and Dia Woman. Uh, very excited about those. I have had a decant of Ciel a long time ago that I finished. I enjoyed it a lot. It's a kind of a watery, floral, kind of wet fragrance with, I think it has like water lily and things like that. Um... I'm so excited. Okay, there's a Louis Vuitton fragrance. I can't quite see what that says, but there's kind of a little of everything in here. There's some Frederick Mall in here. There's, um, I mean, this is so nice of her. Oud Imperial from uh, Paris Monte Carlo. I also love that house. I think it's so, you know, it's really good value for money. So if you haven't checked Paris Monte Carlo, I think that's really, really worth the money. I'm really interested in their lavender fragrance. Um, I need to go back to that one and try it again because I remember like, I think it's called La Lavande Romaine or something like that. So maybe Romanian Lavender. Um, this is what happens a lot when I get things. I like start thinking of other things like something will lead, something that I try will be a bridge either into my own collection. Like it'll make me, it'll remind me of something I already have and want to compare it to. And then I kind of like start enjoying it again. Um, or, or it will bring me onto something else like a new note. I, I just love this. It, it's so, so, so much fun. I just want to see if there was something more that I've tried from, from here more properly. There was one more. That was the, okay, that was the writer. Oh yeah, the writer from Genium. Um, it was created by Louise Turner. That was actually really nice. I, I've written fresh, slightly bitter, um, herbal, and rosy. Yeah, it has a slight rosy touch. It has rose, but it also has mate, which is a really kind of like a bitter note and Jasmine Thyme Only Bonham. Actually, that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna go back to Ryder, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try some more from that house. I found that to be something that I don't have in my collection. But today, I'm just gonna tell you also what I'm wearing today. Uh, I went to this little event and with these two, uh, two women that have a podcast called Odepod. If you are Scandinavian, uh, Swedish, Norwegian, you can, they speak Swedish. But otherwise, I really recommend their podcast. It's called Odepod. And they talk about, they went. They had this little event and we, everyone that came got to pick out a decant. And I picked out Calligraphy Rose from Aramis, which is probably most famous for their male-oriented uh, classic designer fragrances. Uh, but this one I think is more niche quality. It's definitely unisex or maybe even marketed towards women. It's a beautiful, and the, the, the fun thing is now I can wear rose again. I appreciate rose. And this one is... It's the dry down is you get like a big splash of rose and you get some herbs and then that kind of quiets the rose kind of blends in with the other notes I would say in the dry down and now I'm getting more like ambery notes like resins and I think it has oregano which is kind of unusual. Um, I did take notes about this. This is a beautiful, I mean if you see this second hand this is long time discontinued. Um, if I've understood correctly, let's see. Oh God, I love this fragrance. I just wore this the other day. Let me see. Yeah, okay. It, it was. It came. It was launched in 2013. The perfum, perfumer's name is Trudy Lauren. Lauren. L O R E N. She hasn't made that much, but uh, it has in the opening saffron, honeysuckle, and oregano. So there is some sweetness from other florals as well. I wouldn't have been able to say honeysuckle. And then there's rose, myrrh, styrax, lavender in the mid. And olibanum, labdanum, and ambergris, and musk in the base. It's a, it's a beautiful fragrance. Where rose, in the dry down, rose is only one of the notes. It's not like, oh, I go around, I'm walking around smelling like a rose. It's, oh, I feel enveloped. It's it's it has a great projection. 
it, um, I don't know how long it lasts. It's been on now for a couple hours, like since, yeah, for three hours. But it's, it, I can smell it without having to, to go to my arm. Like I can, I've been really, you know, like walking around, moving around. I can like get little puffs of it. I love that so much. I think that's such an important quality of a fragrance. Um, I do weigh that in a lot that I can smell myself and enjoy my own fragrance. Anyway, highly, highly recommend Calligraphy Rose from Aramis. So if you see this secondhand, I would almost go as far to say that if it's at a reasonable price and you see it on eBay or something, buy it. It's That's a safe blind buy recommendation. And if you wouldn't like it, I'm sure you can, you know, maybe sell it to someone for the same price. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I love it. It's it's really really a good fragrance. I'm gonna I'm gonna cherish my drops. I only have three milliliter, but it'll last me a while because I have all this stuff to go through. I haven't counted the fragrances in this box, but like, there's a lot here. There's so much here. Um, I emptied that you or someone like you. So from Eta Libre d'Orange, that was good. Oh, here's something that I don't. Jabir, Jabir. I don't even know. K. It says. Jabir from, from a house called K. There's, so there's so there's things in here that I've like never ever. Here's another one that I've like never seen. Superstitious from from. Oh it, aha, it is Frederick Mal, but I don't I didn't recognize the sample. Superstitious I have actually tried I think sometime a long time ago, and then I got some Ariana Grande Cloud. Um, so there's a little mixture, but most everything in here is niche. From Tower Incense Rose, there's a Lucky Scent sample. There's so much in here. I'm so excited. Uh, I just had to share it with you because I'm sure you understand the feeling of getting a whole box of, of material for my videos or, you know, just even to 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 enjoy on my own. I mean, that that a stranger would do this for me. You know, I think it's just such an incredible thing. Um, I, I feel proud that someone has enjoyed my content enough to, like, send me something completely for free. I mean, these days, samples are not that easy to get a hold of. You have to either buy them um, I mean, you don't get them anymore when you go walk into a store. It's not like someone will give you a sample. You get like one when you spend $300. That's like, that's what it's like. In Sweden, anyway, it's like that. You don't get samples in stores very often uh, it, if you don't buy anything. If you buy something, then you'll get maybe one, maybe not even that. So uh, samples are kind of, um, and I think it's because people have started selling them secondhand. I think then then the, the perfume houses don't really want to hand them out for free, I think. I think that's what it is. All right, guys, um, there'll be more coming up from this box and other things. I've actually did make some purchases last week. I'll tell you more about them in the next video. All right, guys, goodbye.